when I was working on patrol, uh, I would go out and I would work at night. Loved night shifts, just getting away from all the brass and all the annoying car wreck reports and uh, whiny people. And just, you know, at night, I loved working the 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. shift. It just seemed like more real people were out there. If it was after 3 in the morning, you would only see, you know, in the winter, the snow plowers. And if it wasn't winter, you'd see the newspaper delivery vehicle going around and, and the cops. That was about it. And I liked the purity of that, just the, the cleanness of all of the working stiffs, the vanilla people were at home sleeping, and it was the, the good guys and, and occasional bad guys that were out there. And at the end of a shift once, actually it was the next day, I just made an offhand comment to a sergeant that, uh, yep, no burglaries had been reported for our previous shift. And the sergeant said, well, he says, wait a minute, Shepard. He says, do you, do you want to accept responsibility for that? And I, I, you know, I was kind of thinking, yeah, I do. And, and he said, because if there had been a burglary, he said, should, should you be blamed that there had been, that you hadn't done a good job patrolling? And he's like, you know, I, it, it's good to feel pride that you went out and did a good job keeping your, your town safe, but do you really think you had absolute control over that? And if not, be careful, because it could flip around the other way. And uh, I thought about it, and he's absolutely right. And what brought this to mind was my recent look at a gas pump. I was I was filling up with diesel, but I looked at the uh, the regular unleaded gas price, and it was much lower in uh, February of 2024 than it had been just a, a couple years ago. And I remembered all those stickers that I would look at, and I loved them, on gas pumps that had a picture of Joe Biden pointing at the price, and it had the, the quote, I did that. And yeah, that was absolutely funny. I mean, it's clever. That's, that's good. I love that that was done. However, I want to make sure that people don't actually honestly think that Joe Biden in his first couple years in office personally somehow made gas prices get all jacked up um, or that now that he has more experience and he's a much wiser man <laughs> but by 2024 that now in all of his wisdom he has caused the gas prices to go much lower again um, no, he, he didn't do that. And he also didn't make them go up. Uh, neither of those were completely, primarily his responsibility. Um, it, it, and that's something that I'm, I'm very frustrated that Republicans and Democrats and, and also just smart people uh, will look at and, and actually fall for this stuff. They'll look at one little thing that they do or don't care about, the, the unemployment rate. And then when it changes, if it's for the positive, and their beloved leader is in office as the master, then, oh yeah, we did that. Our team did that good thing. And then if anything bad happens, like, well, yeah, that's leftovers from the, the previous bad team. Or not everybody in the current government, you know, maybe the Senate or the Congress isn't, you know, on our team, and they're the ones that are causing it to happen. But when bad things happen, it's never our guy's fault. It's always the other guy's fault. And then when good things happen, it's our fault. And it's not, hey, you know what? We owe a, a debt of gratitude to the, the prior uh, lead master that, that kind of set things in place so that, that things trended in the way that they currently are. It's just so unfair and uh, ridiculous and stupid to think that a president can wake up Monday morning and, you know, by the end of the next week, he's he's changed immigration to a huge degree or whatever. Um, yeah, they, they make some stuff that occasionally makes the needle bump a little bit, jump, but eh, not, not a ton. I was also pondering, uh, I am, right now I'm in a, a town near where I live, not the exact town I live, but nearby town, and I'm staying at a relative's house. She, uh, heads to warmer country in the winter, so I get to use her house when I want in the winter, and I'm very grateful for that, and I'm sitting in her nice, comfortable house here thinking, and I was watching this YouTube video, and uh, 
I, I normally don't have these popping up in my feed, but I've noticed the last few days there's been a little bit more variety to what pops up. And this time it was uh, it was a, a Democrat, like Young Turks thing. So it was more of a lefty totalitarian thing than a righty totalitarian thing. And it was something about what do Trumpites uh, watch them melt down when they see actual facts presented or something like that. Well, I've seen a bunch of those with people going out on the street. They'll interview. These are, are righties, Republicans. They'll go out and they'll interview 20 people, pick the five dumbest ones, cut out all the smart things that those people said, and just include their idiotic moments. Well, this was the same thing. Just this time it was done by a Democrat for uh, of Republicans. And he was presenting these facts, and, and then they were just ha playing back the portions of the responses that really made these folks look like idiots, which I'm sure they are. But one of them was a, a gal just kind of freestyling, and she was repeating Trump's talking points, and she actually believed them. Like, she was saying, well, they said something to the effect of, well, why do you, why do you think, after watching him in his first term, and then now he's been gone for a while, what is it that's making you want to vote for him again? And she says, well... You know, he, he always put America first, and that's just really important to me. <laughs> and she actually thought that Biden doesn't, in his own, whatever's left of his mind, he's not putting <clears throat> America first. And maybe Clinton didn't put America first, and so on and so forth. But just this selfless, benevolent, awesome, wonderful, giving, caring, kind, loving, almost almost an, an apostle or a, a saint, this this wonderful Trump, he really just, he doesn't care about his reputation or anything except America being first. And there's so many, so many problems with that statement. But anyway, she just really thinks that that is his stance, that he really, truly, more than other politicians, puts America first. And it just shows to go you how great uh, his marketing, his propaganda has been. Uh, Scott Adams has talked about this, uh, especially in his awesome book, Win Bigly. Um, just how brilliant Trump is in his messaging. And he repeats these very simple, easy to remember things over and over and over and over. And then his, his disciples just believe it. And then they regurgitate it, and they think that it's true. And he did this all the way from the beginning. I remember at the very beginning, this guy I knew who was a, considered himself to be a free-thinking, independent, right-leaning guy, just absolute Republican dude. He was saying that he, he had the same line, whatever was on Fox the night before, he would pensively say to me that, you know, after he'd done his careful contemplation, He'd say, you know, I'm not really sure I support Trump, but he sure does have a lot of good things to say. Well, that's what everybody was saying back when Trump was running. Or not everybody, a huge portion of the people who voted for him. And it was because Fox told him to use that wording. Uh, not in as many words, but actually, yeah, verbatim. Very interesting. And of course, I know that all politicians do this. This is, this is marketing. This is how they go about doing their propaganda thing. But it's just, it's interesting. Um, I thought I would also just comment a little bit and rant about uh, making America great again. And this goes back to this point that I keep harping on over the years about the, the intermingling, conflation, uh, misuse of terms that have mushy meanings. And America is a good example of that. So America... There's North America and there's South America. And so if one says America without distinguishing if one means South America or North America or Central America, then I would just have to reasonably assume that it is all three of those until somebody narrows it down again. Um, so if somebody says, you know, I, I love America, especially the middle part of it, well, then I would say Middle America, that's obviously Central America. So that person cares about Central America. But if they don't clarify, then I have to think that they love all of the Americas. And so why does Trump put the Americas first? 
Or maybe he means just North America. Maybe it's just Mexico, Canada, the U.S. that he loves the most, that he care, that he wants to put first. Um, surely he wouldn't be ignoring Canada and Mexico, the two biggest other countries in uh, what's considered North America. Um, surely he wouldn't just be ignoring them and be putting the United States government's jurisdiction that it is located within North America. Perhaps he wouldn't, perhaps, he's not just meaning that, is he? Oh, he is? Oh, well, okay. Let's, let's even say that somehow I'm just dunce and I didn't realize that. Oh, now I understand. Okay, so what he means is actually to the south and north of certain parallels, um, that is the area that he puts first. Well, then we would have to say, well, first in what way? Uh, like, is he America first? He wants us to be first in pole vaulting, and he is going to either train the pole vaulters, which I think he would do a very good job at. I, that's one of the things about Trump that I love. Is I think kind of like the dear leader of North Korea back in the day, like he, that guy had to jump in and do almost everything, and I bet you he trained the pole vaulters. And I think Trump could do that, too. Um, so is that what his big thing is? Is America first in pole vaulting? Oh, that's not it? Well, is it first in military power? Okay, well, I think he has he has accomplished that. <laughs> well, okay, maybe Clinton accomplished it. Or maybe Reagan did. Or maybe LBJ did. I don't know who really accomplished that. When was it that... Uh, uh, U.S. government had the most powerful military. When did that happen? Was that right after the Second World War that it kind of became number one in the world? I don't know. Um, but whatever that is, Trump didn't do that. That's something he inherited was the most powerful military force uh, in current times. And he's, you know, it's probably going to last for the next couple few years, maybe even 10 years. Who knows? Um, but that's not something that he can take credit for America first. Because when Clinton and Obama and Biden were presidents, uh, America was first as far as military might goes during those times also. So that can't be what he means. Um, what does he mean, America first? Does he mean that American people are better at doing uh, jobs like building coffee mugs or something like that? I say that because I'm, I'm sipping out of a coffee cup, probably made in China. If he says that, okay, this coffee mug, just as an example, should have been made in the United States, uh, government's jurisdiction, then why? Why is it that this coffee mug, would it be of better quality? Like, it's been working now for years. I've been drinking out of this coffee cup. Sits in my relative's cupboard, and this is the one I choose, and, and it it works just great. I don't know where it was made. I'm guessing China. I don't want to turn it upside down, though, because it has coffee in it. Why would he care if this coffee mug was made in China or Mexico or locally? And I, Is it the quality of the item or is it the price? Does he want me to be able to pay less for it so that I have more money left over to, to buy other things? Uh, is that what he wants for me? Or does he want it to be made locally so that it'll cost me more for it, but then more people will be making coffee mugs in the United States? Does he want more people making coffee mugs in the United States? And if that's what he wants, I wish he would just say, I've always had this dream of lots of people making coffee mugs and other stuff in the United States, and I, I really want that to happen. Even if it costs all of y'all more, um, then you don't have as much money to spend on other things, I really think it's worth coffee mugs being made in the United States. And to encourage that... I'm going to steal from from people who are trying to have voluntary relationships with, with people in the United States. So let's say this was made in China. Some Chinaman says, hey, anybody want to buy this, this mug? And he says, it's 50 cents. And then the American company is saying, well, we make them also, and they're $3.89. And then the, the one person says, well, you know, I think I want the 50 cent one. And then... Trump jumps in and says, well, before that cup can come into this country, the, the Chinaman needs to hand the, the American U.S. government 50 cents also just in order to be able to hand it over to the other person. Like getting themselves in the middle of that relationship, that financial translation, 
surely that can't be a any nobody could think that's a good idea doing tariffs and all that kind of thing so what is it what is it that we all are so excited that Trump is is putting America number 1 why why is anybody excited about that what do they mean i don't i don't think it makes sense in the coffee mug example in what way does it make sense that would be different than obama or biden or uh any other us government president over the last 50 years like which of them had a materially different understanding of that um like if they really sat down and, and put their thoughts on paper and then had a, a editor look at it and say, you know, you're not being completely clear here. Please put it in a little bit more direct, simple English. And they really wrote down what they believed. Would it be that much different from each other? I suspect not. And so I really think it's funny that some woman on the street is interviewed and really truly thinks that it's just awesome that Trump, who really stands out from all the other candidates, puts America first. It's America first. So, that's a, obviously a dumb person, and I know that nobody listening to this is stupid enough to think that that is true. Um, and if you, if you do think that, uh, you know, I shouldn't call you stupid. That's not very nice of me. But I would suggest opening yourself up to some some philosophy, some understanding, maybe street epistemology, maybe really examining your own beliefs using that system. That, that could be helpful. Hey, thanks for joining me in this uh, this little wandering brain thing. Hope you enjoyed it. If you do, let me know, because if you don't let me know, then yeah, I'll probably keep doing it, but it's, it's kind of nice for me every so often to say, hey, you know what? You said some stuff. I disagreed with everything, but you got me thinking. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear some feedback every now and again. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.